The best brush for mini painting is the one that gives you the confidence to put paint on a model and have fun. In this video, we're going to chat about choosing the best paintbrush for you. And so we'll be talking about what makes a brush good, when to use a particular brush, and finally, running through some of the brushes that I use. First up, what makes a paintbrush? So any paintbrush will have a handle, a ferrule, and the bristles. And the bristles are divided into the belly and the tip. I'll talk about the bristles in a few seconds. But before that, you should know that all brushes are at least in part handmade. And the very best brush manufacturers employ master craftsmen, brush makers who've been doing it their entire lives. Regardless of the brush type and the type of material, the fibres, which the bristles are made from, are gathered into bundles, combed and sorted, and checked through to remove any bad hairs. Then they're inserted into a ferrule and shaped, and then that ferrule is glued onto a handle. This process is essentially the same no matter the brush. It doesn't matter if it's a $2 makeup brush or a $300 sable brush. The process is essentially the same. So, how do I choose a good brush? There's lots of differentiating factors that make a good brush or a bad brush, such as build quality and bristle material. But for me, based on the conversations I've had with brush manufacturers, the biggest single factor in what makes a good brush or a bad brush is the quality of the bristle material. Simply put, the higher the cost of the bristle material, the better the brush. Broadly speaking, as they'll deliver a more consistent brush that's been quality controlled and will last longer. Now, of course, it depends on what you're using the brush for, and we'll get into that in the next section. But for detail work on miniatures, you'll get a better result if you spend more. And again, there's lots that can affect the cost of a brush. I actually go over that in my last video when I talked to Jason from Monument Hobbies about the merits of synthetics and sable brushes. And that video is linked in the description down below. But high quality sable or high quality synthetic brushes from a decent brand will give you consistently good results. Actually, for me, brand doesn't matter. Find a brush you like, a price point that works for you, and go with it. At the end of the video, I'm going to go through some ideas to give you a head start. But what will make a difference is how you paint. Are you rough with your brush? In which case, maybe buying something cheaper or synthetic, which has stiffer bristles, would be a better shout. Or maybe you're a slow, deliberate painter. In which case, a brush with a bigger, longer belly might be the way to go. It'll hold more paint and it'll dry out less quickly. Do you add lots of fine details or soft transitions, in which case a good quality sable brush which has more flexibility may be the right choice because you can take advantage of the natural properties of hair to just be a little bit more gentle. I'm sorry there isn't a hard fast answer here but as I say if you're struggling stick around to the end of the video and I'll give you some tips. One piece of advice I can give you to help you choose a brush is to be more aware of how you paint. How much pressure do you apply when you're painting a model? Are you using the side of your brush more? Are you using the tip of your brush more? Do you wash your brush regularly or do you just use it and abuse it? All of this sort of stuff will affect the brush you choose. One thing I look for is whether the handle's comfy. Once you're armed with these facts, I would head down to your local art shop, pick up lots of different other brushes and hold them. You can even give the bristles a bit of a flex in your hand, assuming they'll let you do that, of course. You may, by doing that, you may discover a brand you like that you weren't aware of. That's how I found my Pro Art, which is beautifully weighted and has a long handle that I find super comfy. All of these little details will tie into your decision about which brush is best for you. After quality, the thing that will decide what brush you use is the job at hand. In this section, I've laid out the sort of brushes I would use when I'm accomplishing different tasks. But as ever, it's up to you. So this is my use it and abuse it category. For basing, scenery, glues, or anything else that doesn't require precision, I have a whole range of craft store brushes I use. Lots of shapes, lots of sizes, to give options about what we can do with applying texture and bits and pieces like that. But the defining characteristic here is cheap. These are brushes that I don't mind if they get a bit gummed up and I don't mind if I have to throw them away. I very rarely do, but if it does happen, it's not a disaster. I also use these for dry brushing, stippling, as the shorter bristles are really stiff and excellent for applying texture. For layering, I'll generally use cheap synthetics. This slot, for example, I grabbed from eBay for 30 quid for over 30 brushes. There are a range of sizes from six all the way down to four over zero, but I use the larger sizes most often. All I'm usually chasing with them is an even layer of paint, and but for finer work, I can still do some finer work with these. I just use the tip of the brush. 
These are my workhorse brushes. I use these for 70-80% of the work I do. For finer details, such as highlight placements, I use my Pro Synthetics, as I like the long bristles. But prior to this, I would have used my Raphael 8404s. One area I do still always use sables for are when I'm painting things like skin on larger miniatures, where I often need soft, subtle glazes to get the transitions I want. Like in this bust. I also have a few weird brushes in my collection, like these sculpting brushes, which I use for modelling clay or these older tank brushes from GW. Which I used to dust my minis when they've been sat on my shelves for too long. I'm sure there are lots of cool ways you can use a brush and I won't have mentioned them all here. But it's good to share, so if you have some good ideas, drop a comment down below. And while you're down there, give that like and subscribe button a click too. Thanks. So I said earlier on that at the end of the video, I'd show you some brands that I like to help you out if you're stuck. So here goes. Number one for me, Monument Hobbies. Their Pro Synthetic Pro Sables are great brushes with long bristles and they're made in Germany by master brush makers and sold by the awesome Monument Hobbies. I can't recommend these guys enough. I really like them. Close second are my Raphael 8404s. These are gorgeous sable brushes. They've got consistent quality, they're great prices, and yeah, I, I used them for a couple of years before I switched over to Monument. I really like them too. Number three for me are ProArt. The ProArt Spotters are my absolute workhorses, and their Series 3 sables have gorgeous long handles which are really comfortable and nice to use. The only downside, and the reason they're not my number one brush, is because of their long handles, they have a tendency to click clack on the camera when I'm recording YouTube videos. So that means I only tend to be using for personal project. So there you go. So there you go. If you want to explore more videos on this topic, I have two. One, exploring the merits of synthetics and sables with Jason from Monument Hobbies. And the other, explaining how to properly care for synthetic brushes, cleaning and all those useful bits. Check them out around here somewhere. And remember, humans need fantasy to be a place where the falling angel meets the rising ape. See you next time.